I've been getting requests asking for this series to continue, so I figured I would give it another shot. I'm not talking all the time, just once in a while for something different. Anyway, here's five shows based on comics you probably missed. Blade. The character of Blade was introduced all the way back in 1973 in The Tomb of Dracula, number 10. He's since gone on to appear in numerous other books as well as his own series. Blade the TV series started on June 28, 2006. While the characters from the comics, the show was following more of the aesthetics of the Blade movie series with Wesley Snipes. Although standing in for Snipes in the series was Sticky Fingers from the rap group Onyx. The show was also a major stepping stone for actress Jill Wagner, who up to this point was mostly known as the Mercury Girl in a series of car ads. Excuse me, I, I didn't know Milan came with all-wheel drive. Yeah, you can't get that on Camry or Accord. Wow. It had me just on the looks. While she had other jobs prior to this, like Punked and Monk, this was her first starring role. The show premiered on June 28, 2006. The pilot was a two-hour movie followed by 11-hour-long episodes. It revolved around Krista Starr, who just returned from a tour in Iraq to discover that her twin brother died under mysterious circumstances. She tried to get some answers and stumbles onto the war between the vampires and the mysterious daywalker known as Blade. Probably the main reason why the show feels more like the movies is that it was co-created by David S. Goyer, who wrote all three of the films, as well as directed and produced the last one, Blade Trinity. The show was the first scripted series on Spike TV. The series was edgy for a network cable show, which is exactly what Spike TV wanted. It had copious amounts of violence and hints of partial nudity. They were trying to appeal to the male demographic the network was created for. The pilot did very well in the ratings, and they were hoping for that to continue, but unfortunately, the series dropped off and was canceled after one season. The last episode aired on September 13, 2006. While Sticky Fingers had the voice and build, he unfortunately didn't quite have the acting chops of Snipes, so most scenes he just stands around looking angry. The show was fun, and with the added time, they were able to delve further into the vampire wars that were mentioned in the movies. If you like the movies, this series is worth checking out. It got a DVD release that you can usually find pretty cheap. Birds of Prey Birds of Prey was first introduced in Showcase 96 number 3 in 1996. It was originally a one-shot with the characters Black Canary and Oracle, formerly Barbara Gordon Batgirl, teaming up. Birds of Prey became an ongoing series in 1999, and in 2003 the character The Huntress was added, which was the lineup it's best known for. There was a pilot created for a Birds of Prey series for the WB Network, with Dina Mayer as Oracle, Ashley Scott as Helena Kyle, the Huntress, Rachel Scarston as Dinah Lance, and Sherilyn Fenn as Dr. Harleen Quinzel. The network wasn't happy with Fenn's performance, so they hired Mia Sarah, reshot all the Harley Quinn scenes, and inserted them into the pilot. The show aired on October 9, 2002. The network was hoping this would be a sort of female-led version of Smallville. The series is more or less an Elseworlds story, set in New Gotham City. It's been several years since the city was abandoned by Batman, and crime is running rampant. Determined to take back the city, Oracle, the Huntress, and Dinah fight back against the evil mastermind, Dr. Harleen Quinzel. Dinah had yet to become Black Canary, something that most likely would have happened if the series continued. The show suffered from major studio meddling. Right out of the gate, even though they greenlit the show, the executives didn't like the character of Oracle. They weren't sure how to handle a major character being in a wheelchair and wanted to push the Huntress to the foreground as a way to appeal to a younger audience. They also didn't know what to do with Dinah. There were talks of writing both Dinah and the Oracle out of the show entirely. They even wanted Harley Quinn written out as well. One of the reasons there were no major characters was because DC wouldn't allow them. They wouldn't let them use any major characters, and they could only reference minor ones. They were able to show the Joker because it was essential to the story, but they had to show him out of focus. The writers versus the executives was a constant battle, with many of their ideas being shot down, and the show devolved into a freak of the week show, much like Smallville. They would introduce some new metahuman bad guy, and the Huntress would fight them. They pushed the writers to include Oracle less and less each episode, to the point of where she would only appear for a few minutes each week. When the writers found out the show was being canceled, 
They no longer had to abide by the whims of the executives and wrote the series finale, Devil's Eyes, which many say was the best episode since the pilot. The show lasted one season, with the finale airing on February 19, 2003. The show also got a DVD release and included the unaired pilot, which aside from the different casting of Harley Quinn, has a few other changes in it. The Crow, Stairway to Heaven. The Crow comic series was created by artist James O'Barr in 1989 and released by the indie comic company Caliber Comics. The comic series gained more attention after the release of the movie based on the series, The Crow, in 1994. The movie starred Brandon Lee, who was tragically killed on set. The Crow, Stairway to Heaven was a Canadian series created by Bryce Zabel. The show was loosely based on the movie, and I do mean loose. While the basic premise is there, Eric Draven is brought back from the dead to avenge his murder and the murder of his fiancée, the show stretches the premise in all sorts of directions. This includes showing times in the past where the crow has come back for revenge, although the character is still wearing the mime makeup, which they try to explain away as war paint, instead of something that was solely unique to Eric Draven. Although to be fair, they did find various ways to include the paint in the movie sequels as well. The show now has Eric Draven appearing as himself and then going into crow mode for an action sequence. It's somewhat goofy, but Mark Dacascos playing as Draven really gives it his all. He's an incredibly trained martial artist, and so the fights in the show were done quite well. He was perfect casting for an imperfect show. The series ran from September 25, 1998 to May 22, 1999. It had 22 episodes. The show is released on DVD in multiple regions over the years, but it's currently out of print and very expensive. Nightman. Nightman is a superhero series developed by Glenn A. Larson, the creator of shows like Quincy, Magnum P.I., and Knight Rider. The series is based on the character The Nightman from the book of the same name that was published by the Ultraverse through Malibu Comics. The show is about Johnny Domino, a saxophone player, who gains the ability to telepathically detect evil after being struck by lightning in a cable car accident. He's now lost the ability to sleep and uses his power to make a bulletproof costume and fight crime at night as the Nightman. He suffers no adverse effects from not being able to sleep, aside from the need to constantly keep busy. He has no other superhuman abilities, so he has to rely on his skills and super senses in order to not get killed by the bad guys. In the comics, he has a chunk of debris lodged in his head, and his origin also coincides with the super team The Strangers. The show ran in syndication for two seasons from September 15, 1997 to May 17, 1999. It had 44 episodes. The show had various guest stars from Jerry Springer to Fabiana Udenio and even David Hasselhoff, who plays a villain in the pilot. The show won Best Musical Score in a Dramatic Series at the Leo Awards in 1999. The series was released on DVD by Lionsgate in 2018 and is pretty easy to find. In my humble opinion, it's worth picking up. As a fan of the comic and the show, I think it's campy, enjoyable cheese. As silly as the premise is, the comic is much darker and much better. Time Cop Time Cop was originally published as a three-part story. Time Cop a Man at a Time, in 1992. Time Cop is about Max Walker, an operative of the Time Enforcement Commission, which operates in the far, far future of 2007. The TEC is in charge of monitoring the time pool and stopping history from being altered by illegal time travelers. The comic proved so popular, the rights were quickly snatched up, and the film Time Cop, starring Jean-Claude Van Damme, was released on September 16, 1994. The movie was a huge hit, and still remains as the highest grossing film with Jean-Claude Van Damme as the lead. However, it was very different from the source material. Time Cop the TV series was broadcast on ABC. Much like the other shows I mentioned, the series follows the movie Time Cop, as opposed to the comic it was based on. The pilot aired on September 22, 1997. The show was not about Max Walker, but the character was renamed to Jack Logan played by Ted King. Because of low ratings and terrible advertising, the series was canceled before it was able to finish its first season. They shot 13 episodes, but only aired 9 of them. 
The last episode aired on July 18th, 1998. The show never received a DVD release, but the episodes are available to watch on 2B TV. While the show was cut short, writer Daniel Parkinson was hired to pen a series that continued the adventures of Officer Jack Logan. The three books were The Scavenger, Viper Spawn, and Blood Ties, which came out in the late 90s. Well, that's another five shows. Out of all of these, I like Nightman the most, but that may be due to my undying love of the Ultraverse which also brought about my dislike of the idiots at Marvel, but that's a whole other huge story. If you want more of this every so often, let me know. I have lots more good, bad flicks and exploring videos in the pipe coming very soon. You really are clueless, aren't you? Better than being hopeless. <laughs> and who are you supposed to be? Room service? Mm -hmm.